And so this is the University of Ghana campus and of course it's the first day of strike for the UTAC members and you can see uh, quite a number of students moving up and down but as we know the lecturers are on strike. Let's speak to um, the mouthpiece for the student body and pick their thoughts on the students' reaction to the development going on over here. So the General Secretary of NUCS has joined me for his quick thoughts on um, this strike and the way forward for students. Welcome to the City Newsroom. Thank you very much. Were you surprised to wake up to this strike by UTAC? Oh, no. You were expecting it because they had warned earlier? Yeah, we were expecting it. It's, it's, it's something that we knew would come and we were hoping against all odds that government would have intervened earlier and ensure that we don't get to this step but then they have not uh, which is rather unfortunate so we we, we feel that um, it's high time they did the needful and 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 satisfy the demand of utag um, by meeting some of the conditions they are putting there um, i mean most importantly the condition that they return to the 2013 modalities of their you know uh, conditions of service pending the implementation of the the report on the on the market survey. I think government should simply meet at least that one at this point so that they return to the classroom. Any other thing from that, we would be supporting UTAC to continue with the strike action. So as students, you're in support of what your lecturers are doing? Yes, we, we support UTAC to go ahead with the strike because um, last year they were on the strike, uh, somewhere around against or November, I think. Yeah, okay. We we all called on them to suspend it because of how COVID interfered with the academic calendar and then everyone made an appeal to them. They acted in good faith, suspended the strike for exams and all those things to continue for the academy here to successfully end. That's enough breathing room for government to meet them halfway and, and meet some of those demands. But up to now, government has not done any of that. And so the City Newsroom, my name is Vivian Kai Loco. We are staying on the story of um, the strike by UTAC. Remember, last week they said they intend to go on strike if some issues specifically to do with their conditions of service are not addressed by the government. We just took you to across a number of um, campuses affected by this strike. So now let's understand the UTAC story, why they have decided to go on a strike now, especially when universities have opened. Let me speak to the president of UTAC, Professor Nunu, to inquire more about the action. Prof, welcome to the City Newsroom. Thank you very much. So basically it has to do with our conditions of service. So conditions of service negotiations commenced somewhere in 2018 and it's been ongoing up to this point. So throughout the period, certain aspects of the document has been looked at and discussed. So at the moment, what we are looking at here, the thematic one has to do with the market premium of university staff. So um, back in 2012, 2013, government decided to pay us an interim market premium, which was 114% of our basic. And then in 2013, April, there was a government white paper that decided to put a freeze on this market premium, subject to the conduction of a labor market survey. The labor market survey, unfortunately, Though it was done in, um, in, uh, in um, 2014, um, its implementation never saw the light of day. In 2019, a labor market survey was conducted and we only received a report um, somewhere last week. That is uh, after it was conducted in 2019, only last week that the report came out and saw the light of day. Its implementation is something that we see as suspicious and we think the timing of the issuing of the report is just a camouflage just to um, as we does to stop the strike action, but its implementation, we are not too sure if government is committed to it. Um, though the prerogative is with government, ensuring that it is paid is what is, is, uh, is of interest to us as university teachers. So imagine that you were taking a market premium of 114% back in 2013, then a, pre a freeze is put on it. Today, the market premium you are taking is just about 50% of what you are uh, of your basic. So in the end, you see some sort of depreciation taking place constantly with government not committed in any way to work on it. So that is what has brought us to where we are today. So why don't you go back to the negotiation table to demand that it's implemented? Why back down and stay away? We have not backed down from the negotiation table. What's the commitment of government? You can find out from government officials when was the last time they worked on it. Um, National Labor Commission, when we went there to serve them notice of the strike action, 
That was on 22nd of December. The security officer in front of the place told us that the place is down and he's been instructed not to take any communication. So imagine if they had received the letter on 22nd of December, the two letters would have got to the, their end and then everything would have been solved. But they said they are off and they have been on break since 20th December. Which government agency went on break on 20th December? So you'll see that there was just some processes in, in there trying to frustrate the whole process. So that is what was done and we were frustrated and we just had to go ahead because uh, we managed to email the thing to some of their staff. Maybe they don't work with electronic mails, so they don't want to work with that. So for us, we got the message to them. Quit government agency was on break from 20th December to 10th of January. They told us this is the day they are going to resume. They so will resume on the day. 10th? Yes, that's what we were told. By the security? By the security officer. But you can't take the security officer's you know, he's, word he for... He said he's been given instructions not to allow us into the building. But no Prof, one. I'm sure you have access to the, the, the director of the National Labor Commission. I don't. I don't, I, don't, I don't think he knows me. Neither do I. I also don't know him. But your institution has access to him. And you could easily uh, reach out to him if you want to. You talk, we didn't have access to him. Isn't that interesting, Prof? It's very interesting that he also doesn't know me for him to reach out to me because the letters go to all other offices who needed to know about this. So if he wanted to reach out, he could have done that. But it's like um, a decision on their part that let's frustrate these guys a little. Do so you think National Labor Commission, who is supposed to be independent of the issues, is also in bed with other government institutions to uh, frustrate your plans to get things done? Uh, Personally, that is what I think. Some of us are not too comfortable with the structure of the National Labor Commission as it stands now. Not just the several other government institutions. You agree with me, change in government. Um, we have a Transitions Act 2012 that will say that any appointee of the president goes home with him. So there's no security of tenure for a lot of these people. And so the person comes in and will always want to do the bidding of the government of the day. If there's security of tenure for most of these government institutions, I think they will have the clout to bite. Would you go to this week's meeting, which is summoning you, and with this in mind that they may not be on your side, how are you going to approach your, the, the conversation? So in the end, we'll have to come together and decide what exactly our strategy is going to be, go to the Labour Commission with our lawyers, go and listen to what they have, and then take a decision from there. Um, whatever it is, we'll have to decide. We get to the bridge, we'll cross it. All right, thank you very much, Professor Nuno. We wish you well, and we wish you return to um, the, the campuses soon to do full work and not just part work. <laughs> thank you very much for having me. <laughs> thank you, too, for the sake of the students. So that's uh, Professor Nunu. He's the national president of UTAC. He spelled out why they've decided to hold uh, this strike, why they are not going to batch till all their issues are addressed.